Good morning. Welcome to Green Lake Church. We're delighted that you can join us for worship this morning. We wish we could be together in person, but we can be together via the means of electronics and by the uniting of our hearts together. So to all of my Green Lake family and to the visitors who've joined us from many places around the world, welcome. We're delighted that you can be with us this morning. To begin our worship service, our Minister of Music, Wanda Griffiths, has a prelude for us. Wanda? Welcome back. Again, we are delighted that you can join us here for worship at Green Lake Church here in Seattle. And uh, our family is scattered around the city and now scattered around the world. People are joining us for worship all over and we're delighted that you can be with us. We have a number of announcements to share with you today. So I will begin by looking up at my list. Ah, let's begin with birthdays. So. 
Twyla Lyman is having a, I believe it's her 98th birthday um, fairly soon. So if you know Twyla, she would love to get a birthday card from her. So if you check the weekly email, there's an address in there that you could send a birthday card to. Um, we can't be together to have a, a live party and eat cake and blow out candles together, but we can send cards. So if you know Twyla, it might be a wonderful time to send her a card. We also have other birthdays. Lee Devins has a birthday this coming week. Lee, happy birthday. Uh, Magnus Hayes has a birthday. Happy birthday to you, Magnus. And Richard Wonderly, Dick, happy birthday to you. And I hope it's a really good one. All right. Oh, I have something to share with you. As you know, we sent off our youth pastor, Hans Jouissance, to become the pastor of the Breath of Life Church and the 24-7 Church. And we sent him off in style. We had a drive-by party and we raised some funds to uh, help him out. It was an amazingly generous gift that you gave. And Hans has sent us a, a thank you that I wanna share with you. It's in the weekly email, you can see it. It's also in the bulletin, but let me read it for us here. Hans writes, Dear Green Lake Church, I cannot express to you how grateful I feel for the many blessings and gifts I have received from you. I can surely say that you have spoiled me beyond measure. Thank you all for continuing to take care of me with your latest gift. I miss you greatly. Green Lake, you were more than a job assignment. You have become family and family is always dear to my heart. I have great news. I have been at my churches for about three weeks now and he sent this uh, a week or so ago, so it's more like four weeks now. And he said, it is safe to say that they are still standing and I haven't burned them to the ground. Way to go, Hans, Pastor Hans. Once again, he says, I want to thank you for everything. Hans Jouissons. So um, many blessings to Hans in his new ministry. Um, all right, Wanda. Wanda Griffiths, our Minister of Music, has a, a note about our special music today. Wanda? Hi, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's happening in our music today. Um, the offering time is going to have music by um, the handbell choirs that are combined from both Holy Rosary and the Green Lake Church. That was recorded last June, and they have enjoyed gathering together to do a, a handbell festival where they get to do music with a larger group of ringers and meet new ringers, and uh, it's a very fun time. Holy Rosary's director is Marlene Land, and of course, our director is Shelley Legrone, but since they know each other, putting the two groups together works really well. Um, and so Marlene will be seen conducting in this video from, from June 1, and we're excited to get to revisit that in this time of not being able to be physically together. Then the uh, special music time is also pre-recorded, but it is done through the magic of recording. We are able to include Spencer Gibson, who is currently living in, I think it's Austria. And uh, so Patty Gibson is playing a couple of instruments and Spencer is playing violin. And you'll notice in your program, there's a little note that says, the once was lost, but now is found violin. And if you've been around Green Lake for several years, you may remember that Spencer, uh, when he was living here, his uh, instrument was stolen one morning um, during worship or right after worship and was lost for many, many months, but then eventually was found in the bushes outside the church. And so it needed uh, a lot of uh, restoration work on it. And I think Lee Devins did that work. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and so then, um, we have Spencer doing music, and also uh, we have Maria Dor Cortez, who is uh, a niece of Patty Gibson, I believe. And so uh, Lee figured out how to do the video and edit all that together. They figured out the arrangement of this beautiful uh, Scottish folk song, and uh, you are going to be subjected to a beautiful treat for that. Um, so we're grateful for all their work to share with us. Then uh, one other quick word on the closing hymn, as sometimes happens, we get a little bit of a glitch and the actual number, if you have a hymnal is 103, uh, not 320, which is left from last week, but 
the words will be there as always. And so um, it doesn't matter unless you're trying to thumb through your hymnal to find, uh, to find the, the update. One more thing, if I may, uh, we are talking about having August 15th be a Sabbath that we are celebrating as International Sabbath. And so we are going to be reaching out to people who uh, are capable of singing or talking, uh, sharing things in their native languages. And um, please feel free to let uh, myself or Charlene uh, or Gumi know if you would like to be included in that. Um, you do not have to be invited. You know, we don't always get everyone on board that we uh, would like to include. So please feel free to volunteer and say, I'd do it. That'd be great. Uh, so I think that's all for me, John. Thank you. Thanks, Wanda. Uh, appreciate that. And boy, that'll be a lot of fun on August 15. So I just want to add my word to Wanda's. If you would like to be part of it or willing to be part of it, let us know. And don't hesitate to volunteer other people. You might know of somebody who has something to share that uh, wouldn't volunteer themselves. So be sure and let us know. Thanks. A couple of more announcements related to Sabbath school. I stuck my head in electronically to a couple of Sabbath school classes this morning. It was a lot of fun to see people and hear them. Um, if you are part of the church service now, but you're not part of one of the Sabbath school classes, um, you are invited. Uh, seems like every week when I visit the classes, I see new people who are joining in the classes. In the weekly email, there are the links so that you can join various classes. Uh, if, but if, if you need information, let us know, get in touch with the church office or with me personally. We'll make sure that you get the information you need so you can be part of one of the Sabbath school classes where there's real significant interaction. It's a lot of fun and better than one-way communication. Not quite as good as being together in person, though there are elements of it. You get to see people's faces up close, which I really like. Uh, one last thing along that line, we have all of the printed material that usually is distributed in Sabbath school classes. So the children's papers, uh, quarterlies for every age. If you would like any of the printed material that goes with Sabbath school, let us know and we'll make sure that we get it to you. So let the church office know, or you can let me know, but let us know if you would like any of the printed material, the quarterlies or the other Sabbath school papers uh, they're collecting here at the church. We would be delighted to get them to you if you would like them. So please let us know and we'll make sure that uh, you get that. One more announcement, which I see on my board, but I almost forgot. After church today, we are going to have a Zoom potluck. Now, unfortunately, I will not be able to eat the cookies that are available in other houses. This is a sad story. So I will just have to feel hunger in my tummy as I, I uh, imagine cookies that could be eaten if we were together. But we will be able to see each other. We'll be able to talk to each other. So after church, um, if you will join in a new Zoom meeting, and the link is in the uh, the weekly email, click on that and join us for a little while of visiting together. Uh, it takes the visiting that we do at Sabbath school and then allows us to, to cross groups so that uh, people from different Sabbath school groups can be with each other, check in with each other and see how we're doing. So right after church, uh, sign in again with the new Zoom invite and we'll spend a little while together visiting after church. And I'll remind you of that at the end of the service. I think that's it for our announcements this morning. And now we will go back into our worship by singing our morning hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. Let's sing together.
Let's pray together. Creator of earth and sky and sea, maker of rocks and birds and trees and all that is, thank you for calling us together in worship this morning and receiving us with your smile. We pray, Lord of the nations, that you will hasten the day when spears are turned into pruning hooks and swords are turned into plowshares and justice rolls down like the great river. Lord of our hearts, work in us and through us. Make us agents of your kingdom, accomplishing justice and peace, bringing help and hope and healing. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's offering is for COVID-19 response. When a crisis strikes, it's an opportunity for us as a church to reach out and help others. Today, a special offering will be collected worldwide for COVID-19 response. Its purpose is to help communities devastated by this pandemic. All COVID-19 response offerings will go to the church's worldwide divisions and their fields to fund initiatives to help those suffering from this crisis. It will support masks, essential supplies, counseling, and whatever it takes. Please mark on your online donation COVID-19. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless this offering so that by giving, we can share Christ's love, not only in the world, but also in tangible acts of love. Please heal this world. Amen. Sophia thought, oh, you know, I think a good story would be from when, the, when we first went swimming at the river at the end of our road. 
So when we first arrived here the first summer, we kind of looked around and said, oh, there's a swimming hole at the end of the road. We should drive to the parking lot and kind of see where it is. So we got here and we got out of our car and we looked around and we saw that, well, this must not be where the swimming hole is. So we ought to continue on along the trail and see where we can go swimming because we've heard it's a great place to go swimming. We walked down the track and got to this first pool location. Now in the summer, the water was a lot lower than it is right now, but there was a nice pool to go swimming in. And I decided I would have a jump in and see what it was like. So I stepped down the rocks and kind of made our way down into the water. And I stood there and put my hands up to help the kids go in. Isaac was walking down to come in and hop in as well when something banged into my ankle. And I thought, oh, that's odd. These are very aggressive rainbow trout because he had seen about three rainbow trout when we first arrived in this pool. Looked like a good spot. Well, Isaac and Sophia weren't quite ready to get in the water, so I decided, well, I'll hop out of the water and see what's going on because, well, I don't really want to be in the water with aggressive rainbow trout. As it turns out, it was not a rainbow trout in the water. A long black snout made its way out from underneath the rock overhang, and that long black snout was attached to a four foot long black body of an eel. One of the long fin eels that live here and are endemic to this area. It's really cool if you want to take a look on Google for New Zealand long fin eels. So fun to look at and in fact even at areas sometimes fun to feed but definitely not fun to swim with. And I decided I was very unfortunate to, fortunate to just get hit in the uh, shin by the eel and not bitten hard because that does happen. And that is when we decided we needed somewhere else to go swimming. We decided we needed another place to swim and we came upon this pool not far up the track. Now again, it's a little bit lower in the summer, but you can see it's a nice place to hop in and get cooled off on a hot summer day. We used a bit more wisdom this time, and before we got in the water, we threw some stones to see if there were any eels hiding, and sure enough, a small little eel made its way up, but it was scared enough of the stones and of us to continue on down the river. And this is where we have swum ever since. So, Sophia wanted me to remind you of the moral of this story. If you are going to go jumping, into a new place that you want to swim always look first because while you do know that you have to worry about rocks and sticks and logs some places you also have to worry about eels have a happy sabbath and hi from new zealand thank you jesse it's great to see you great to hear from you hi kids uh, before we go to our morning prayer i have one late arriving prayer request to share with us. Uh, Erica Orban um, had, has, is at the ER today uh, as a patient, not as a, a physician's assistant. So we want to remember Erica and those of you who know her might want to check in with her later this week and see how she's doing. Um, and now it's time for our morning prayer. Let us pray. Our God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Come to our aid as this coronavirus spreads globally, has inflicted so many. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and their friends from being infected. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together, working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in long-term care, the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, 
doctors, essential workers, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Hear our cry, O God, listen to our prayer. We pray for those families who have lost loved ones to this horrific disease. Hear our prayer, O God. Inspire and give us insight and hope to all the researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 12, 1 through 7. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived at Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the Oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him.
Today's New Testament reading comes from Hebrews 11, 8 to 14, and I will be reading from the New Living Translation. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith, for he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child, though she was barren and was too old. She believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people that like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, there was no way to count them. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. May the Lord add his blessing to the hearing of the word. Thank you, Hector. This week, Karin and I had to take one of our animals to the vet hospital early in the morning. And while we, we left the, uh, the dog at the hospital and then we went to a Starbucks to wait for a word from the vet. As I went into the shop to get treats for Karin and me, I noticed a bicycle uh, against the front wall and a, a guy standing with his bicycle which I didn't think much of the first time I glanced, but then the second time I looked, I go, wait a minute, this is not a local guy. There were things about his bicycle. I saw a tent, um, I saw a few other items. It was, did not, the bike was not especially heavily loaded, but what I saw told me, this guy is a serious long distance biker. So I stopped and asked him where he was coming from and where he was going, what he was up to. He had started out in California. Uh, he had come up here to uh, Seattle, stopping in many places along the way. His eventual destination, he said, was Connecticut, but he was going to take his time getting there. He told me he had driven all over the country, but when you drive a car, he said, you go too fast, you miss too much. So this time he was bicycling across the country. And he said, every time I come to a point of interest, someplace to, that, that needs to be seen, I head down the road and I go see it. I'm able to take my time and see all the beautiful stuff to be seen. We talked a little bit more about um, you know, his plans, about the notion of these very, very long bike rides. He said, and I laughed at one thing he said, you know, it's really, really wonderful but you've got to be willing to pay the price. And I knew what he was talking about because that kind of endeavor, there are wonderful moments, but there's also those days of rain and cold and flat tires and the, the challenges of the trip. Uh, as I came back out of the shop, I gave him my phone number because we had talked about which route he was going to take over the Cascades headed east. We talked about highway two or the bike trail that parallels uh, uh, Interstate 90 over Snoqualmie, or my favorite, Highway 410 going over Chinook Pass. Talked a little bit, and so I gave him my phone number and said, if you decide to take Chinook Pass, um, you need a place to camp for the night before you head up over the mountains, you could camp in our pasture. So here, give, give us a call. We have a place out there in Enumclaw. A nomad. You know, I don't know what his life is ordinarily, but obviously if he started in California and he's headed to Connecticut for a little while, for more than a day or two, he's going to be a nomad, wandering, traveling here and there with just a small collection of items on his bike and uh, out to see the world. 
Um, the last couple of summers, Karin and I have um, hosted a, somebody from Germany uh, who is hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. And, uh, you know, it, he, he's doing it in sections while well, he's done now. He finished the last. Uh, but he would come over from Germany and spend a month on the trail, then fly home and next year, come back and do another month. So I think it took him three summers, but he was with us for two summers. And it was fun hosting him. Karin and I used to talk about hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, but uh, probably at this point, we're not going to do that. But it was fun to host this uh, guy and kind of vicariously live the trail with him. And our support of him gave us a special sense of connection with, with his endeavor and with the hiking. Um, nomads, you know, our Old Testament scripture reading talked about Abraham the nomad. And our New Testament scripture reading also talked about Abraham the nomad. And I wanted us to, to give some attention to that this morning. If you remember how the passage begins that we read, it said that uh, it, it began with God called Abraham to leave his homeland and to go to the land of Canaan. If you look at the text a little more closely, you realize that Abraham had already left his original homeland. He had traveled with his father from Ur of the Chaldees, which was down in the, the delta of the Tigris and Euphrates River. He had traveled northwest with his father, Terah, and, and the whole clan. And they had come to the town of Haran. After living there for a while, uh, Abraham's father, Terah, had died. And I think I might need to check my messages. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, Terah had died, and now God renews the call and says, Abraham, it's time to go. And Genesis tells us that Abraham collected his entire entourage. It was not just Abraham and Sarah. It was Abraham and Sarah. It was Abraham's nephew, Lot. And then it talks about, and all the people they had acquired, their household was several hundred people, at least by that time. So this whole collection, this, this agglomeration of people left Haran and, and went south toward Canaan. God says, look, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And through you, I'm going to bless all the nations of the earth. People who bless you will be blessed. People who uh, curse you will be cursed. I'm going to be with you. You have a special place in my plan. Now go to Canaan. So they travel to Canaan. And the first place they come to, where they, they stop for a while, is a place called Moray. And there was a large oak there, a famous tree. And Abraham camped at the Oak of Moray. And you might think, ah, finally, home. Abraham has landed in the promised land. His journey is complete. But it's not. This was just one camp. As you read through the chapter, you read that after a while, he moves on to another camp. And then another. Abraham is a nomad. There is no settled place. Even though he's in Canaan, where he was called by God to go. He's still not settled. And so you can either say he's not home or home can be in many places. And my impression is that Abraham made home out of wherever he was. And this is hinted at in the text where it says that Abraham there in that place in, at the Oak of Moray, Abraham built an altar. He created a place of worship, a place to be rooted to the earth and connected to God. He built an altar. And I, as I've all week, I've been living with this story and asking, what does this story tell us? And there are several themes here that I think can apply to our lives today. Maybe the first one is simply this, this picture that our spiritual heritage is rooted in 
unrootedness. Abraham is never rooted. He leaves here and he comes to Canaan, but in Canaan, he does not own any property. He is still a nomad. And it's important for us to understand that when God is involved in our lives, sometimes our lives will still be unsettled. And that's okay. Abraham's life was never settled, but through all of it, God was with him. And if we, we trace the theme of God with Abraham and God blessing all people through Abraham, you know, the Christian tradition picks us up and we see Jesus as the ultimate descendant of Abraham. And he is going to take his people to the promised land. But notice that the last words of Jesus to his disciples were I, in Matthew, I will be with you always. Now go. So Jesus does not allow his disciples to settle down, but he tells them, go, move on, move forward. So we should not be surprised if God's, God's map for our life includes a lot of movement. Now, when you get to be my age, you begin thinking about settling down. You know, you, you want to stay in a familiar place. You don't voluntarily do a whole lot of moving. At least I think most of us don't at my age. And of course, a number of our church members are old enough that I'm a mere kid. <laughs> but sometimes we don't have a choice. And all of us are living in a different world than we were six months ago. The world has changed. So whether we wanted to stay or move, we have no choice. We have stepped into a new world. For me, it feels very unsettling. I, I, I'm, I'm constantly sort of feeling a bit disoriented. My patterns of life, my patterns of work, disrupted, trying to learn new ways and, and, and new methods. It's, it's unsettling. But the story of Abraham assures us that on the long journey of life, God goes with us. And when we end up in places that don't feel like home, God is still with us. He still has a plan for our lives. I'm intrigued that in the, in the text, it talks about Abraham coming down into Canaan. And God says, I'm going to give you this land. But he makes it clear, but not now. That's in the future. And then it says, and in those days, the Canaanite was in the land. Now, if you are steeped in the Bible stories, we think of Canaanites as the bad guys. They're the enemies. We have the story of David and Goliath. David, the Israelite. Goliath, the Canaanite, the Philistine. And there's war between the Israelites and the Canaanites. And, but, but at the time when Abraham enters Canaan, enters the land of Canaan, the Canaanites are his neighbors. He and they share the land together. They own the land, but they make room for him. He is a welcome stranger among them. And when it finally comes time for him to bury his wife after Sarah has died, Abraham goes to the Canaanites to buy a piece of property so he has a proper place to bury his wife. And they are happy to sell him a cave so that he can do that. So it's important for us to understand or, or to see our spiritual heritage prepares us to view wanderers, to view nomads, to view immigrants as people who may well be on a journey commanded by God. In the current environment with some of the leadership, it's easy for us to, to hear words about immigrants that paint them in very dark light. Uh, ominous light and to look at them first with with suspicion and fear but our spiritual heritage teaches us to look at nomads and wanderers immigrants refugees and understand that journeying is one of the things that god calls them to do god one of the things that god calls people to do and we should begin from a place of asking how can we help this nomad how can we be good neighbors 
to the nomads who pass through our lives. Just like the friend on the bicycle or the friend from Germany who was here to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, we should look at wanderers and travelers and remember that our spiritual heritage is rooted deeply in the story of wandering and traveling. And even Jesus himself, of course, traveled to Egypt before he came back to Palestine to continue his ministry. One more thing that I see in this story, and I didn't see it early in the week, but as I lived with it and, and late in the week, I thought, ah, that might work. Abraham, when he arrives in Canaan, he builds an altar. And I asked, what, what, what is this telling us? What lesson can we take from this? It's clear that in building the altar, Abraham is creating a new place of worship. He has come from Haran, which is up um, on the Tigris and Euphrates River up north. Before that, he came from Ur of the Chaldees. Those places had their indigenous religions. And, and the Bible text actually makes it clear that Abraham and his ancestors worshiped idols. But he's come down here to Canaan. He builds the altar, creating a new place of worship, a new way of worship that's appropriate to this new world that he finds himself in by the call of God. We are in a new world. The, the world has changed dramatically for all of us who are part of church. We could try to hold on to the old ways and do just what we've always done because it's, it's familiar, it's home. But I think this story encourages us as we find ourselves in a new place, a new world, to ask, how do we build an altar here? What are the forms of worship? What is the life of the church look like in this new place? We can't go back to the old place. What does it look like in the new place? How do we connect with each other in ways that work now? How do we connect with God corporately and individually in ways that work now? When we are able to come into the building again for worship, things will be different. We will not have a choir. We probably will not be able to do congregational singing, but we'll want to be together. So we will find ways to be together in each other's presence and in the presence of God that are appropriate for the new world that we live in. We'll figure it out together with God's guidance. And God will be with us. He is with us in this new world, and he will be with us as we figure out the right ways and the best ways to do church as we move forward. So as we enter the new week, we face again the uncertainty that the news is throwing at us every day. You know, economic uncertainty, the uncertainty surrounding the virus and the epidemic. Let's remember that in this journey, God travels with us and keeps us. And in this new reality, let's remember to cultivate new ways of being aware of God's presence, of hearing God's voice, and of caring for God's people, for the nomads that God sends across our paths. Now it's time for our closing hymn, Oh God, Our Help and Ages Past, Our Hope for Years to Come. Let's sing together. <laughs>
Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Green Lake Church for worship today. We hope that you can join us again next week for church and for Sabbath school. And I hope that you'll be able to, to sign back in after the, worship, after the worship service is completed here today. And we will have a Zoom potluck, a Zoom reception so that we can visit together. So, and now we will have our postlude by our Minister of Music, Wanda Griffiths. And when the service is over, I invite you to sign back into the Zoom link in your weekly email for our conversation after church.